Hey AP students, in this video I'm going to share with you an example of a document based question. This is a student who went on to make a 5 on their exam, always had strong essays. Let's see what they did correctly on this one. So the prompt, always got to begin with that. This is a compare and contrast essay and I can tell you that it dealt with the early civil rights movement versus the later civil rights movement. So I'm not going to give you the entire prompt, but I can tell you that that is the gist of it. Always begin with your contextualization. This person did a good job of contextualization. The first uh, three to four sentences approximately, it gives some background to the civil rights movement. And so the student does a nice job providing some specific events that led up to the prompt. This is not just a mere reference or a phrase. They're very, very specific, and you can see some key terms that are a part of that. In particular, I've got highlighted in red, but especially looking at the stuff that's in pur purple as well. So the ending of governmental job discrimination under FDR, the integration of the armed forces under Truman. And generally, what they're trying to do is show how the civil rights movement kind of got kick-started. Now, once we've got finished with contextualization, you want to move on to your thesis statement. I'm not going to read every little detail about it in this particular essay out loud or anything like that, but do take a moment to look at what they did with this particular thesis statement. What they're using is the formula, the thesis formula, although X, the counterpoint, Y, the argument, because of reasons A and B and C. So you need to ask yourself with this particular thesis statement, are they mentioning some similarities and some differences? Essentially when you get a comparison essay, you need to ask yourself, well, what is more significant? The similarities between the later and the early civil rights movement or the differences between the two? So always ask yourself, well, which of the two seems to be the most significant? So the thesis statement acknowledges two things, the similarities and the differences between both parts of the civil rights movement. It is related to the prompt, it does have categories of analysis, and it also takes a position that there are more similarities than differences. Moving on to body paragraph number one. So what we're looking for in uh, red are your key terms or your pieces of SFI. Whether you're writing a DBQ or an LEQ, always think about using three to five key terms per paragraph or pieces of SFI. I call them specific factual information. And this person does a nice job of that. Also, when you look at doc number two, you see how they've cited a document. This person's been given seven documents. They're telling me, the reader, that they're using document two and they're finished with their thought and they do that by citing it down there towards the bottom. I hope you can see that. So this particular paragraph is about similarities. See the sentences that are highlighted in purple. You can see how they're talking about both movements echoed by all parts of the movement. The student also does a nice job of using three to five pieces of SFI specific factual information or those key terms in this particular paragraph. But we got to look again at the citation right there. Doc 2, they put it at the end of the sentence. What are they referring to? This is document 2 and you can take a moment to pause the video and look at it. But what it is, you can see, is a 1963 Martin Luther King letter from a Birmingham jail. I know in my class we actually read this. So what this person is using and how they're, what, they're, what they're using and saying about this document, again, King, who was arrested during nonviolent protests in Birmingham in 1963, responded to calls that he should back down. He viewed that on, the only real way to achieve uh, lasting change was to peacefully protest in the streets instead of slow court processions. So what this particular student is doing is giving the author's point of view. This is um, an example of HIPPO. This is the, one of the P's in HIPPO that they're using. So they would get credit for that. Remember, on a DBQ, you need to do this for at least three documents. I'd suggest doing it for four just so you can ensure that you get that point. Let's look at the rest of the essay as well. So now we're going to switch gears a little bit as we get into body paragraph number two. Now they've swapped over to talking about differences between the early and the later civil rights movement. You see in red your key terms, still doing a nice job of that, and then you can see the differences highlighted in purple. Do want to focus in on document seven. Let's see what this, what's going on with this one as well. So this is document seven, what they're referring to. And so take a look at how they're using this one in their essay. Despite the murder of three SNCC workers and the burning of several black churches, havens of civil rights activities, the efforts of the movement led to a dramatic increase in voter registration in the South by 1968. 
I also held by more stringent voter protection laws such as the Voting Rights Act of 1965. When you look at the data that's been given, you're going from 60 to 1968, and you're talking about African Americans being registered for vote, to vote, and you can see in, in pretty much every category there's a, there's a huge increase. And so this person is doing a couple different things. So the student correctly gave the historical context of this document the H in it so he would get credit for that and I can also tell you that this person provided evidence not mentioned in the document earning them outside information the O get credit for that as well so doing a nice job of, of taking moments to analyze these documents I hope you can see that usually it only takes approximately about three sentences or so, or so to really use a document when crafting a great DBQ let's finish this out so body paragraph number three in this one in particular, the student continues to develop the analysis regarding the differences between the early and later civil rights movement. You can see that happening, of course, within the purple sections. And so lots of SFI, lots of key terms being used in this particular paragraph, doing a nice job of starting to wind this DBQ down. So take a moment, pause, maybe read through what this person did correctly. So starting to finish this one out and wind this thing down. So we have, again, uh, a body, body paragraph number four to look at. So this student decided to end their essay by analyzing the similarities between the two. I still see lots of key terms, lots of SFI, and good um, interpretive commentary showing how and why there are more similarities than differences as they begin to finish their DBQ. I see good citations in there as well when they get finished using a particular document. So what's kind of neat about a conclusion on, in AP US history is that you actually don't earn any points from a conclusion. Therefore, there's no need to stress out about having the perfect conclusion finishing out your essays. But I can tell you this as we finish this one out, you don't want to end an essay simply by ending a very cheesy way of saying something like, this is what makes America what it is today or something of that nature, you do want to kind of recap your point. You recap some of the main points that you've made and then also uh, kind of reaffirm why you are correct in whatever claim you made in your thesis statement. And so um, just a few reminders as we kind of finish this out. A uh, short recap of your argument, provide a justification why you're correct, and then just kind of quick reminders as we finish out this um, example of a DBQ. Always begin with contextualization, kind of think of the Star Wars opening crawl. Um, make a great thesis statement, great argument. Use all seven documents. I am a strong believer that all seven documents, you can say something about all seven. Um, six of them have to support your thesis. Very important to, to, to get that accomplished. And then the deep analysis or the extended analysis using HIPPO. Minimum three of the documents, I'd suggest four. And then of course we've done, I think, a pretty good job of using SFI and studying that in this particular essay. Three to five pieces of SFI or key terms per paragraph. You can get all that accomplished. You're going to have a very, very well done DBQ. Alright guys, hope that was good, hope that was helpful. Let me know if you got questions. Thanks so much for watching.